Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we're going to be doing a quick start for using the WLED software to control RGB LEDs. It's going to be that time of the year again, at least here in the U.S., where it's the holiday season. So that's when I personally start thinking about lights and stuff. But fun RGB LEDs are fun any time of the year. You can use them in your office, in your you know tinkering area, anything you want. So if you're like me and like lights, stay tuned. This will be a quick start way to see just you know the basis of how they work and then from there if you want to get more complicated you can go as deep as you want to go this will be hopefully a simplification of a video i did a couple of years ago hopefully much shorter i also hope that this can serve as a reference for the folks that attended the recent led wreath making workshop at the propeller maker space here in columbus indiana if you're just wanting to make an rgb colored wreath or something that's not too terribly long or just enough to like cover you know the perimeter of our room up near the ceiling this may be all you need, and you may not need to go any deeper. And if you happen to see this and you're not into any of the tinkering and stuff, there is nothing wrong with getting a little controller like this from Amazon. This will plug right into your strip, have a power source, and then you can control it from an app on your phone. This may be plenty for you. The folks that might want to watch the rest of this want to get under the hood and maybe look at all the possibilities that you could do with something that's a little more powerful. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Did you know you can get custom PCBs made starting at only $5? And in addition to their PCB prototype service, they also offer PCB assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. They even have this great project section of their website where you can see tons of projects that others have shared with the community, and you could share yours as well. If you see something you like, it's as easy as adding it to your cart. While you're checking out all the cool projects, why not check out the PCB Way 6th Project Design Contest? There are tons of great prizes available, and you can even get a prize just for participating, a Raspberry Pi Pico. Submissions will be accepted through January 15th, 2024, with results being announced on March 8th, 2024. For more information about the contest, as well as all the other services that PCB Way offers, please check the links in the description. And again, we thank PCB Way for being today's sponsor. So, what is WLED? WLED is a really neat piece of software that runs on either the ESP32 or ESP8266 chip. It provides an easy to use yet powerful web interface you can use to make your RGB LEDs do all kinds of fun things. Hardware. As I mentioned before, this software is designed to run on an ESP32 or an ESP8266. I've used both platforms with no issues. You'll find, however, that the ESP32 has the ability to run more than one strand if that's something you want to do from one controller. The board we'll be using today in this example is a Lowland D1 Mini 8266 type ESP. Next, you'll need your addressable RGB LEDs. Now you can use this strip type like this, but for this video, I'm going to use these string type ones because I've never used those before, and I think these are more like holiday lights, and they're easier to wrap around a wreath and that kind of thing. I'll have Amazon links for these example ones. You can get them much cheaper from AliExpress, but if you're trying to do something before the holidays, you may need to just pay the higher Amazon prices to make sure you get things in time. To keep things simple, we're gonna stick with five volt strips for this exercise, and we don't wanna have overly long strips or link multiple ones together. We'll be drawing our five volts from the board itself, which is getting that from its USB connection. We don't wanna to draw too much current. Anything more complex than that is outside the scope of what we're trying to do here. Now to power your board and your lights, you can use the USB power from the PC, some AC adapters like this, or just a normal USB power brick if you wanna have something remote like a wreath outside, that kind of thing. Now to program the controller as well as power the lights in this quick start setup, you're gonna need a USB cable. And you wanna make sure you either get a micro USB or USB-C, just make sure you get a cable that matches the type that's on the controller you're gonna use. Next, I wanna talk about the connections we're gonna to make to the controller. And we're only gonna be focusing on three connections here, the five volt ground and D4. Now five volt and ground should be pretty self-explanatory where you connect those on your LED strip or LED string. D4 is what's gonna to connect to your data in or data line. Now here you can see on the bench, I'm just using some DuPont jumpers to connect to the LED strip. And then I'll be using the female side to connect to these headers that are already soldered on the D1 board here. Now, depending on what you're doing, it's up to you. You can solder these in or whatever if you want something a little more permanent. But if you're just playing around on the bench to see how you like things, 
this will be perfectly fine. Just be careful and make sure you don't short anything out while power is applied. Next, plug your USB into your computer and then the USB into the controller. Now what we're going to do is make our way over to the WLED installer website, which is at install.wled.me, and I'll put a link in the description for that. And with the device plugged in, it should be on your USB port, and uh, we're just going to go with plain here, and you just click install, and in our case, I know that this is going to be this COM17. It'll vary from yours, like it's not going to be this low one. This is something built into the PC. You may have to experiment or look in Device Manager and see which one kind of comes and goes as you plug it in and take it out if you want to make sure you're on the right one if you have multiple. In this case, I'm going to pick this COM17. I'm going to hit Connect, and then I'm going to click on Install WLED. And it's going to ask us if we want to install it, and all data will be erased. And we're going to click Install. As you can see here, first it goes through and erases it, and then it will just be copying the software to it. Right now it says installation complete. We're going to hit next. Now what it's going to do here is it's going to pop up and it will let you see some local wireless networks that it detects. Now if you want to actually connect it to your home Wi-Fi, this is where you would put that information in. But you'll also need to have a way to know what IP this thing gets at uh, attached to it and that kind of thing. It's not impossible, but if you're just a beginner with this stuff and not very familiar with like home networking, I would say skip this step. And what's going to happen is you're just going to connect to this as an access point. Now, what I'll be doing right here is switching over and showing you what this will look like from your phone. So grab your phone or laptop, etc., and look for a wireless network named WLED-AP. You should be able to connect to it by using the default password of WLED-1234. What happens next may depend on your device and settings, but most of the time your device may think it's a sign-in type page and will drop you right into the interface. If it does not do this, but you're sure you're connected, you can browse to the IP of 4.3.2.1. That's not a typo, that's just what it does. So in here, when it drops you in, check out some of these settings. You can change the network name if you want. You can change the password. You can decide to connect to the wireless network, like in that previous step, if you decide to do that later. Play with the color wheel here for a bit. Do your colors not quite look correct? If so, navigate to this part of the system and see if you change the options for the dropdown. Do they look correct? We've had cases where we needed to change from default to RGB many times before. This number is what you set in the menu to match with the number of LEDs you have in your segment that you have connected. How do you save a setting to come up automatically in the power cycle? If you don't do this, when you drop power, your LEDs will return to a default solid color like this. To change the default setup, I usually make a new preset. So click this bottom right, it says presets there, and then you're gonna hit the plus sign to add one. I've already added this as one, but I'm going to change the ID back to one here and you'll see it'll say overwrite, which is fine. And I'm going to hit save. Then I'm going to go back to the top right config and I'm going to go into LED preferences. And I'm going to come down, scroll down here until you get to the area that talks about the faults. And right there where it says apply preset, I'm going to change that to one and hit save. So now back at the bench view, watch what happens. I'm going to pull the power, and when I apply the power back in, instead of going back to the default solid color, you'll see it's going to pick right back up on the pattern that it was doing before I pulled the power. Now, as far as troubleshooting, I think there are a few things. You want to look for shorts, and just in general, make sure your connections are okay. Um, you know, if this is going to be something that's getting some movement, you may want to solder that, and it's up to you if you want to, like, put some uh, strain relief in there, hot glue. There are some 3D printed cases. I'll put some links in the description for that. You also want to make sure that you don't have too many LEDs. If you're trying to do like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of LEDs off of this one little unit here using the USB power, it's going to be too much of a current draw. And it may just fail to work. It may actually hurt the microcontroller. So there's no protection built into this. If you are looking for something that's got some things to protect you from shooting yourself in the foot, there are some dedicated type circuits or hats that have some protection like that built into them. And I referenced those in my earlier vid, which I will also link to in the description. Also, make sure that you have the right kind of voltage LED strip. Um, if you made a mistake and ordered a 12 volt, for this setup I'm showing you here, this has to be the 5 volt RGB LED strips or string lights. Make sure that it's 5 volt that you have and not the 12 volt. This will not work with 12 volt strips. Last but not least, if the software seems kind of glitchy or messed up, as you've seen earlier in the video, it's super easy to plug this thing in and just go back to the website and reinstall it via the web. 
do a fresh install of the software, blow yours away, and see if that fixes the issue. That should catch most of the common things I'm seeing. Now, taking things to the next level. If I end up doing anything more advanced, I'll definitely record it and share it one way or another and let you guys know. If you end up doing anything cool, find some way to share that with us and maybe we can make a little compilation short or something showing different folks what they've done with WLED. I also want to share some great channels with you in no particular order that will give you some great ideas and can be a jumping off point if you want to take things beyond this quick start level. The first of which is this Dr. Z's. Next one is Cubicle Nate. Cubicle Nate is awesome and he has done some amazing setups his home so just look at some of his sample videos and you can hear how he's got everything synchronized the music it's really cool and also resin chem tech from here in indiana he has some really elaborate things he's done in his home with some leds he's got great videos showing how he done it i definitely recommend checking him out if you were on the fence or kind of interested but not really sure where to start with WLED, i hope this quick start video can give you the little nudge you need to get going and give it a shot if you made it this far thanks for watching hope to see you again next time Take care. Bye-bye.